Hi guys, so let me finish the trio of the videos by this one. So in the previous ones I was talking about five things that made me a better painter and five things that you don't need as a painter, but could be quite useful. This time let's talk about five things slash techniques that will give you a great modeling start and they will make you quick when mastered a very decent tabletop plus army painter. So let's jump into the video. Number one, color theory. So just think about this. Why do those paint schemes make sense at all? Have a look at those few models I found when googling different space marines. They all look very beautiful. True craftsmanship when it comes to painting. I don't know their authors, but heads down to them. If you know them, let me know and I will mention them in the description. But for now, let's focus on why do the colors used here make a lot of sense and look so good. This is a pocket color wheel I bought some time ago. It has been a very important tool in my painting routine and a very clear explanation on how colors work together. This side, for example, shows what happens when you add red, yellow, blue, white or black to different colors. But for today, let's see the other side, an illustration of color relationship. Those rectangles, squares and lines illustrate different types of color relationship. This for example means that colors that are in the triad relationship should be coherent on any paint job if used correctly. So this means the main color and two triad complementary colors as a bonus. Let's see it in the pictures. The main color and the triad ones. Red violet as the main, blue green triad, yellow-orange triad, blue as the main, yellow triad, red triad. You are probably starting to notice what I mean. Green as the main color, orange triad, violet and purple triads. The shade of the color doesn't really matter. Yellow as the main, different red and violets, as triads, bluish hues in the greys. And believe me, I am not an aficionado of the color theory. I am still learning with every paint scheme I do. The more this whole painting process will make a lot of sense to you. And of course, I know that this is a pretty extensive subject on its own. There are many, many YouTubers that have dedicated video just on this topic. But believe me, search it, find it and then watch it or read about it, it doesn't matter. When practiced, it will expand your skills and knowledge greatly. Number two, cleaning your models. So cleaning the models is quite easy, but requires some focus. And I will show you this on a concrete model. One extra thing before we move on to the cleaning part, but this also has an enormous impact on the prepping phase of the miniature. All of the models have bonding or sticking parts that keep them inside the sprue. Sorry, I don't know the professional name of them, but you know what I mean. They are those plastic rods that you have to cut in order to get the model out. My suggestion, as I think any other modelers, is to make the cut as far from the model as it is safe to do. What I mean by that is, if you cut the part out close to the model, you risk tearing a piece of the model itself. It is messy, and to keep the model clean, you will have to fill the defects afterwards. It is time consuming, will cost you extra for some green stuff or any other product for this kind of job. It is not as easy as well. The thing to remember here is that it is easier and cleaner to cut far from the model and then cut with your hobby knife the piece that is sticking out. This applies to all kinds of models, plastic, resin and metal, believe me on that. After you dealt with the cutting part and made it as clean as possible, 
take some sanding paper or any other sanding product you have and start working on the irregularities. Take your time and do it as accurately as possible. View your models from different positions and different lights. If you clean, for example, a squad of the same models for a team, the extra plastic should be more or less in the same areas. But just to be 100% sure, have a close look slowly at the rest of the models. We are trying to avoid here missing those kinds of mold lines, which will be very visible after painting. Those drive me crazy and in my opinion deteriorate the quality of the model, not to mention that they point out the painter's sloppiness. Try doing it with all of the miniatures from now on. You can skip, but this is just my opinion, but you can skip many things on your models, but don't skip this. Number 3. Diluting your paints. Have a look at this. This is one of the reasons why I use the wet palette. The goal here is not to have a too thick paint. There is a temptation, especially if you have limited amounts of time, to not thin it. All of the people on YouTube suggest having a thin paint that has the consistency of skinned milk. So what the fuck is that? I don't really know. Skinned milk, Jesus Christ. My recommendation on the other hand is to get a test model and do trials on it. You can make your paint thinner on your wet palette by spreading it or just add any kind of appropriate medium, be it water or a dedicated product. Just prime a model and use thick paint on one part, thinner on another part, then thinner on another one. Eventually you should level down to glazes, but this should give you a clear indication on how thin your paint should be without damaging the details. Have a look at those two models. One got a base paint straight out of the pot and the other one multiple layers of diluted paint. The difference is pretty substantial. So the main here to take out of this is using a thin paint sometimes in multiple layers. Those pretty guys in the pictures are the opposite of that. Avoid doing this. What can I say? Dilute your paints. Number 4. Painting neatly. So I think that this does not need a lot of explanation, but it requires a lot of practice. If I knew this beforehand, I would put more focus on it, because still my models sometimes get really messy. And if I could reverse time, I would focus on this skill much more. But let me show you this on an example model. <coughs> From my pilot of not shame testing minis. This might seem as a repetition of the previous point, and in some way it is. Maybe let's think of it as an upgrade. By painting neatly I mean being precise, staying in lines, using thin coats. You can of course put an all-out base coat on the model and then a layer one, and then correct the mistakes, but we have to get back to the previous point. You are putting an extra layer of paint this way. If you are precise and use thin layers just on the parts that need this, you damage the details less and details are key here. If you start your painting journey by training this skill, you will evolve as a painter very quickly and in no time you will have the skills to paint small details on very rich or super super small models. So the key thing to take out of this from here is, and of course this applies if you don't use an airbrush, or maybe when I think about it, it also applies to airbrushing. So if you want your models to be crisp and clean, use rather a few thinner layers than one or two thick ones. And don't get frustrated with how much time it takes. 
I know and you will probably guess it as well some paints cover really really bad but believe me it is worth your time last but not least number five edge highlights so the last thing that will make your models look really good are edge highlights. Just have a look at those models. They are all painted by the Games Workshop EV Metal team. And they are all painted just for the purpose of presenting them to people like me or you. So have a quick look at those four combat patrols or whatever it is is called. This is for me the golden standard of painting a tabletop army. All of the models present very nice in a group. When stacked together, they are readable and clean. Everything on them seems coherent and well placed. Let me tell you what comes to mind when I see those models individually and would like to take them apart. It really comes down to the previous points made here. All of the models were well thought out. Color theory has here great application. All of the colors feel good together. Of course, there are many, many ways to make it better, but those ones are really good. The next thing is that all of the models were cleaned really efficiently. What I mean by that is somebody took great care of them. No mold lines are visible, neither the holes in the places where the models were glued together. All of the models were painted with one color, which has been diluted. Multiple layers were applied in some occasions. Everything was done in a very neat and clean way. And the last point here is that they all have edge highlights applied. You can see them on all of the models, no exceptions. Those edge highlights make different parts of the model separate. Without them almost all of the models would look really homogeneously. Edge highlights are really really important. So always do your edge highlights. They will probably take a lot of time, but this will definitely help to define and separate different parts of your models. They will be more visible and better for the eye. So guys, thanks a lot for staying that long. I hope you learned something today and I would really appreciate if you would share, like and subscribe. So guys, thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. And remember, the Emperor protects.